Hello, and welcome to Replay Value. Death Note's first episode introduces a fascinating character in Light Yagami through an incredibly intriguing and tense plot device in The Notebook, and the full runtime sinks its teeth into the character motivations and development presented by that fantastical occurrence. It's a great opener that positions Light as the exemplar for many moral and philosophical questions, but without a foil to contrast him to. That's honestly the major element missing from the first episode, conflict, because the moral conflict of the Death Note is almost immediately subsumed by Light's nature, either being corrupted or revealed by the Death Note depending on your interpretation. That doesn't make the premiere worse, but it does place a lot of weight on the second episode's shoulders, since it has to provide a compelling antagonistic force so that Light isn't operating in a vacuum. And the second episode more than delivers, producing an immediate conflict and brilliant foil with the introduction of, in my opinion, the most important character in Death Note, L. Before we get to that, let's talk about what Death Note requires in its antagonist as a result of the setup in the first episode. First things first, you need someone smarter than Light. Light is by all accounts an incredible mind, finishing first in the mock exams for the country, and the Death Note provides an incredible structural advantage in a dueling detective setup. Just think about it. You have to find someone who does not have to reveal themselves in order to kill, and can couch their actions by determining cause and time of death. Frankly, there's no story here if Light didn't want recognition for his actions, which ties into the second requirement. A proper foil is someone who needs to point out Light's moral flaws. Ryuk actually does a solid job of this on his own in the first episode. The ending minutes where Ryuk points out that Light will be the last bad guy left if his plan succeeds, and instead of him confronting the paradox of evil, Light instead achieves peak cognitive dissonance in both a horrifying and amazing sequence. But since Ryuk is in this weird middle ground of allied to neutral and is a Shinigami, it's important to have a character who represents the human race, who can not only continue to point out these moral questions, but take advantage of Light's flaws to try and win the race of deduction. And finally, though this is kind of a tie into the previous point and is mostly because unsurprisingly I love the idea of battling views of justice, the character needs to play foil in regard to Light's philosophy of justice. The catchphrase God of the New World isn't just for dramatic effect, though it totally succeeds as that. It's indicative of how Light wishes to completely replace the justice system and societal morals with his own will and moral code. Someone who represents and supports the so-called broken system that Light is trying to tear down provides a necessary counterbalance to what would otherwise be a permanently reaffirming cycle for Light. All of these are filled primarily by L, though certainly other characters, like Light's father, help to flesh out certain aspects here and others that I didn't touch on. The other element that really empowers the introduction of L is how much of the second episode is spent on how careful Light is being. From not speaking to Ryuk in public, to building an elaborate protection system for the notebook, almost half the episode is spent purely on proving that Light is no slouch and he's taking his own protection seriously. It builds Light up as thoughtful and continues to suggest that, because of his structural advantage, it will be impossible for anyone to close in on him, much less take him down. But if anyone can, it'll have to be the detective we briefly hear about with the ICPO, who we don't have an opportunity to see, even his contact point is covered in shadow. He does pinpoint Japan as a possible starting point, a promising sign that maybe there's a chance, but almost immediately the audience's expectations should be dashed. While the shadow figure looks very similar in build to Lind L. Taylor, the fact that name and face are public means that he's an immediate target. Even as he declares that he'll find Kira, the audience has no reason to disagree with Light's assessment that it's impossible, especially since Light's apparently one step ahead. Light is confident and doesn't show any sign of reacting up until Lin says that what Light is doing is evil. That's a clear rebuke, one that has not happened on the fan sites that support him, and even Ryuk was just pointing out a paradox without a value judgment. So this direct attack is what gets under Light's skin. The camera shakes as though Light is in an uncontrollable rage, declaring that he is justice and God. Even the name is written massively and across multiple lines compared to his usual small and in the margins writing. This was a personal attack on him and he's treating the response personally as well, maybe a bit unhinged even. The slow melody that was in the background cuts as Lind dies, leaving Light to laugh in the silence and his apparent victory. But to Light's shock, this was all L's plan. As L's theme slowly plays, a methodical piano melody 
LD notes that he got what he wanted, confirmation that Kira exists. Light's shock and frustration is clear in the reaction shots, and the few brief glimpses of L are cold and laced in shadows. The face-off between Light and the TV screen is perfect. They are indeed speaking to one another, but both are shadowy figures who are dueling in the darkness, Light with actions, and L with his words. L is unknowable. We never see his eyes in this sequence, and that looming threat made clear by only one letter has already made one outplay that seems like it could grow even further. Just then, L takes it one step further, taunting Kira to kill him as well, and winning yet another clue when it turns out he can't, as the music builds to its crescendo with the electric guitar. The degree to which L outplayed Light is massive, having scaled down what would have been a global manhunt to just the Kanto region of Japan. Successfully figuring out what Light's test case was, and frankly embarrassing him publicly as shown with the outdoor shots. Kira is not some omnipotent killer. The predictive nature of L being a few steps ahead and taunting Kira into revealing himself by having Lind call him evil suggests that this is a character who is more than capable of overcoming the structural disadvantage of the Death Note, especially since he's currently in the process of figuring out what can and cannot be done with Kira's ability. It's the first indication that Light is not unbeatable, as his arrogance and pride was his own undoing here taking unnecessary action for the sake of lashing out against the claim that he is evil, and the slow methodical process as L spells out his deductions certainly give an air of genius that could very well be Light's biggest roadblock to achieving his goals, not even on just the philosophical level. And L's ability to make a read of Kira's character and determine one of his weaknesses suggests not only his intelligence, but the potential for him to serve as a moral foil as well. The constant cutting to the outside world, not only the police department, but the general public suggests that this isn't just a battle between two minds with only their prides at stake, but also the world's social systems. This is a fight that has massive ramifications for everyone. And that is nowhere more clear than the final scene of the episode as the cameras pan in opposite directions. The head-to-head -head confrontation made explicit through the visuals as each declare themselves to be justice. Two dueling detectives, a perfect set of foils, where the first to lose will die and the other's philosophy of justice will take hold. L's introduction is so powerful because of how certain Light's victory seemed. With his intelligence, his structural advantage, and his perceived cautiousness, Light seemed all set to win a battle that no one else should have known they were fighting. But that desire for recognition and his pride becomes his undoing, and L is able to start putting together the rules to an unknowable and seemingly unwinnable game. The dueling detective format is one of my favorites. Deductions and outplays are always fascinating when written properly. And thus it follows that L's introduction, where a self-proclaimed god is brought down to a mere mortal's level because of their hubris and his opponent's intelligence, will always remain one of my favorite moments in anime history. And L's theme is frankly just icing on that sweet cake.